If the load on the jack is 2,000 pounds, determine the pressure acting on the fluid when the jack is in the position shown. This might confuse you at first because it's asking for pressure, and we haven't really talked about pressure at all in this class, but you have learned about pressure in your previous classes and in physics. And you know that pressure is equal to force over area. So just keep that in mind for now. All lettered points are pins. The piston at H is a cross-sectional area of 2.5 square inches. And it gives you the hint. First, find the force F acting along link EH. The pressure in the fluid is P equals F over A. So basically, what we're really looking for is FEH. FEH is the force in this little link down here. And I think if you look at that, you'll see it's pin connected at both ends, and there's no external force along that link. So what kind of member is that? It's a two-force member, exactly. So two-force member, and we need to find that force EH. And once we find that, in order to find the pressure inside here, we're just going to take that force and divide by the area of the piston, which is two and a half square inches. So really, if we find FEH, we're home free. Now, this is a frames and machines problem. And remember with those, you always have to think about the different free body diagrams you want to draw. I'm going to do my givens and finds, and we'll get started. So we're given that the area of that piston is 2.5 square inches. And we're also given the force is 2,000 pounds. That's uh, shown in the picture. And we're given that they're all pins. And we're given that P equals FEH over area. We're supposed to find P, which is really finding FEH. So let's go ahead and get started. With any frames and machines problem, the first thing you should look at is, can I draw the full system and find the values that I need? What do I mean by the full system in this problem? Where you draw the top of the jack and the two arms. So let's do it real quick and see what we get. So if we draw the top of the jack and we draw the two arms, this arm goes down. And now we're going to draw all the forces acting on that. We've got 2,000 pounds pointing downwards. We've got our D, which is a pin, so we have DX and DY. We have our E. Now that, we already said, is a two-force member, and it would be in compression, so we're going to draw that as F, E, H, and that's what we're looking for. We have another pin over here at B. Looks like B is aligned with D, so I didn't draw this too, too well, but I'll just do that to correct it. We have our BX and our BY here. Okay, looking at a free body diagram, can we solve it? No, of course we can't. We have one, two, three, four, five unknowns and only three equations. So we can't solve that free body diagram as it is. This is when we get out our wrench. Remember with frames and machines, you have a wrench, not a hacksaw. We're going to get out our wrench and we're going to start taking this thing apart and drawing separate free body diagrams of the different members. So let's start out. Let's just draw the top by itself. I'm going to erase this and move it over just a little bit. So I'm going to make that top a little bit bigger. Always good to draw big free body diagrams so you can fit all your forces and information on them. I'm going to draw that big. I'm going to draw my 2,000 pound load on top of it. And then I'm going to draw my C as a CX and a CY. Because that's a pin support. And then I would go to A and I draw my AX and my AY as well. You first look at that, you say, oh, we can't solve that either. There's four unknowns and only two equations. Well, some of you may have already spotted this, but let's look carefully at member AB. If we look carefully at member AB, you can see that that is pin connected at both ends, and there are no external loads along that member. That means what type of member is it? It's a two-force member. So AB is a two-force member, meaning the force is directed along the member. We could draw the free body diagram of that, but that's a very simple free body diagram. And we almost don't even need it. You can look at this. You could imagine that would be in compression. And that would be our AB free body diagram. Seeing that, we now can erase the AX and AY that's on our top free body diagram and make an equal and opposite force acting at A. F, AB, we could call it. Once we have that, I'm actually going to erase the free body diagram of AB. And you see that we have a solvable free body diagram of the top. Now it's solvable, but it doesn't give us what we're trying to find the answer. It doesn't give us FEH. 
So obviously we need another free body diagram. The only body left in this case is CDE. So let's go ahead and draw that. Draw member CDE, pin connected here at D. And at E, we already said it's a two-force membrane compression, FEH. That's what we're trying to get out of this problem, is the FEH right there. And then we're going to draw our C. Now our C is already on our other free body diagram. So we have to be really careful here and make sure that our CX is equal and opposite the other CX and our CY is equal and opposite. Because of Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. You've got to make sure these are equal and opposite of each other. There we go. Uh, when you look at that free body diagram, you first say, I can't solve it because I have one, two, three, four, five unknowns, and I don't have any knowns at all. So with five unknowns, I would need to solve for at least two of those in order to be able to solve the free body diagram. Luckily, we already have another free body diagram that only has three unknowns. So we can solve for CX and CY, plug them into the second free body diagram, and trace it back down to FEH. At this point, you should be feeling pretty confident about this problem, because you've drawn two complete and correct free body diagrams, and you know that you can solve them. This is the most important part of solving any one of these problems, is breaking it down, drawing your pictures, counting equations and unknowns, and making sure you have a path to solving the problem. From that point on, it's equations of equilibrium and doing some math. Make sure that you're spending time on your pictures. Make sure you're spending time understanding the problem and talking yourself through it. That'll really help on exams. Uh, we need our CX and our CY. So first thing that I would look at doing is maybe take the sum of the moments about point A, and we can get our CY. We take the sum of the moments about point A is equal to zero. Uh, FAB goes right through point A, so it won't create a moment. We're going to have your 2,000 pounds. This was given as 2 inches here. Uh, you might ask yourself if you want to convert to feet. I'm not going to, because if you notice in this problem, everything is given in inches. So as long as we stay consistent, those inches will work for us. So that's 2 inches. It's going to be a negative. I put my thumb on A, point my fingers towards the 2,000 pound force. It would tend to curl my fingers backwards of my right hand. So it's going to be negative 2,000 pounds times 2 inches. And then I have my CY pointing up, so that would be positive CY times 4 inches equals 0. Not a hard one to solve. CY equals uh, 1 half times 2,000 pounds, which equals 1,000 pounds. So we now know our CY is 1,000 pounds. Now we need to go for our CX. Um, there are two ways to do this. You could do the moment about point C, and that would give you FAB. And then you could use some of the forces in the X direction to find CX. That's great. That would work just fine. Uh, there is another way to do it that m might be a little bit, well, let's say, trickier. Uh, and that would be to solve for it directly. If we want to solve for it directly, we need to pick a point to find the moment about where FAB is not gonna, going to be in our equation. Now, we already did that with one point. We already did it with A. Uh, but if you remember, we could pick any point along the line of action of AB. So the line of action of AB, let me just draw it as a red line so you can see it a little better, looks like that. The line of action of AB goes right through point B. So if we find the moment about point B, AB will not be part of our equation. Now, you might ask yourself and say, well, point B is not even on that free body diagram you drew. That doesn't matter. You can take the moment about any point anywhere in the universe, and it has to be equal to zero if the system is in equilibrium. So I'm going to go ahead and find the sum of the moments about point B for free body diagram number one here. And where is point B? Well, it looks like I got to erase that. Point B is somewhere down here. Somewhere down there like that. And we're going to need to find some distances. So let's use the, the drawing on top and also our free body diagram. Some of the moments about B is equal to zero. Well, FAB is not going to be part of that, but the 2,000 pounds is. So we need to find the distance between B and the 2,000 pounds. This distance here. We do extend the line of action of that 2,000 pounds down. I guess I didn't draw it quite right. We need to find the distance here. Now, in order to find that distance, I'm going to go back up to the drawing. 
I'm going to say, well, that distance, if I extend the line of action down, this dotted line looks like that. I don't know that distance, but I could find this distance from here to here if we draw this triangle. If we draw that triangle, we know the hypotenuse of that triangle is given as 30 inches. Both of those bars are 30 inches long. So if the hypotenuse is 30, the bottom part would be 30 cosine of 60 degrees, and this would be 30 sine of 60 degrees. Okay, so we know that's 30 sine of 60, and we know it's 2 inches between uh, the green line and the dotted black lines, and we can say that some of the moments about B is going to be positive 2,000 pounds times 30 cosine 60 oops, 30 cosine 60 minus 2. And that would be in inches. Great. Now we have to figure out uh, what would be caused by our Cx and our Cy. Let's do our Cy first. Our Cy would just be 30 cosine 60 minus 4. And that's going to be in the negative direction because of the way that Cy is pointing in my free by diagram. So negative Cy times 30 cosine 60 minus 4 inches. Great. And then there's one more, Cx. If we look at Cx and put my thumb on point B, point my fingers towards Cx, it would tend to bend them back. I have a negative again, Cx. And then I need the height. Well, the height is 30 sine 60, as I already have drawn on the figure over there. 30 sine 60 equals 0. The nice part about doing it this way is I, I could solve for both of those with just two equations. Uh, if you want to do it the other way, where you find FAB first and then solve for CX, that works just as well. Uh, solve for CX. CX is going to be equal to 2,000 pounds. Now, 30 cosine 60 is just 15. 15 minus 2 is 13. Minus CY. Um, 30 cosine 60, again, is 15 minus 4 would be 11. And all of that would be divided by 30 sine 60. Plug that into the calculator real quick. CY is 1,000. We already solved for that. I end up getting 577.35 pounds. Great. We have our CX and our CY. And now what we can do is we can actually go to the second free body diagram, and we can plug those in as knowns. Our CY is 1,000 pounds, and our CX, 577.35 pounds. Notice how the arrows are equal and opposite, and I plug the values in exactly as I solved for them. That's because of the equal and opposite reactions between these two bodies. The arm, CDE, is pushing in the opposite direction on the top as the top is pushing on the arm. So that's why our arrows are equal and opposite to each other. Great. So now all we need to do is solve for FEH. And we don't actually need DX or DY. So hopefully you can see the best way to do that would be to find the sum of the moments about point B. So now I'm using the second free body diagram here. Sum of the moments about point D equals zero. To find the sum of the moments about point D, uh, I'm going to first need the distance from here to here times CY. That's the line of action of CY. Um, so we have to figure that distance out. Now, we kind of already did that, right? We could go up here and draw another triangle, and that's going to be the same triangle we already drew. Uh, the distance from D to the line of action of CY is going to be 30 cosine 60. Uh, the height is going to be 30 sine 60. So the red triangle and the green triangle are really the same triangle, just slid over to the side a little bit, two inches to be exact.
or actually four inches to be exact. So some of the moments about D, I'm going to have a positive 1,000 pounds, which is our CY, times the distance, which we said was 30 cosine of 60 degrees, and that's in inches. Okay, now we have to look at our CX, and our CX, the line of action of CX, would pass up here, and we'd have the height, which we already said is 30 sine of 60 as a distance, and that would be a positive 2, so we can say plus uh, CX, which is 577.35 pounds, times 30 inches sine of 60. Great. Uh, now we need to find FEH. That's the only other one on this 3 by diagram. That would be a negative, so minus FEH. And the distance is given to us as 5 inches equals 0. Uh, go ahead and solve for FEH. Uh, put FEH on the other side, making it positive. It's going to be equal to 1,000 times 30 cosine 60 plus plus 577.35 times 30 sine 60 all over 5. So our FEH equals so our FEH is equal to 6,000 pounds. Okay, we know our FEH now, but that's not what the question asked for. It asked for the pressure inside the fluid, which it told us is equal to FEH over the area. The area is 2.5 square inches. That's going to be equal to 6,000 pounds over 2.5 square inches. And we get 2,400 pounds per square inch, or 2,400. I put 1,000. 2,400 psi pounds per square inch is our pressure inside that floor jack, in order to be able to lift the 2,000-pound load. So the key to these problems is really breaking down the free body diagrams and figuring out how to trace from the givens to the finds. Please let me know if you have any questions.